Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you today? I am feeling better. Thank you guys all for the nice comments uh, regarding my health and London's health. Um, London is, he is struggling way more than I am. So um, think good thoughts for him. He needs them for his recovery. Today I'm coming with my second top seven um, of 2017. I'm actually going to wind up doing three of these. I've already done my top seven um, backlist books I read this year. Today I'm going to do my top seven books that surprised me in how much I love them for different reasons. And then tomorrow will actually be my top seven fiction that came out this year video. So um, I hope you guys are liking these and they are uh, reminding you of some of the books that I read this year and um, putting them back on your radar if you forgot. So these seven books that I chose for you in some way made me either think about books differently, surprised myself that I even liked them because they were very different from what I usually read, um, touched my heart in a surprising way, um, or really just made me think. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, the first book you guys will not be surprised to see on this list is Binti by Nettie Okafor. Um, this book is science fiction, and I don't read a lot of science fiction, but the reason this one surprised me is because it took three pages and I was in this world. I wanted to know what was gonna happen to the main character, Binti, and I loved it so much that the day I finished it, I went out and bought the second one at the bookstore immediately. So this is the story of Binti. She is from Earth. She lives in a culture that is very inclusive. They don't tend to leave the um, place where they live. It's very um, desert, very hard to find water, and they very much are, they stay with their family units and within their own community. But Binti is brilliant and and just has ambitions beyond her community. So she applies and gets accepted into this interspatial, interstellar, that's what I'm gonna use, interstellar college. And um, the first novel is about her trip to that school. And on the way to that school, she, um, her ship that she's involved in is attacked by an alien race. Um, that has been at war with another group for some time. This race is sort of jellyfish-like in nature, and basically they slaughter everyone on the ship other than Binti. Something is special about her, and she becomes the gateway for peace between these two cultures. Um, the second book is really about her return home and dealing with what her society and her community and her family thinks about her decision to leave. Um, it is very, very smartly written. You really do appreciate the brilliance that is the main character. You feel her fear and terror about making these life choices that are different. And I can't wait. The third one comes out this year and I am waiting with bated breath. Um, so that's Binti by Nettie Okafor. And I highly, highly recommend both this one and book two. You will be waiting for book three. Um, the next book, actually, I'm going to tell you about, you guys, has been in my pull. I was in a wrap-up not that long ago, and that is River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. Um, who knew that I would like a book about cowboys on hippos? I mean, I didn't think that that would ever be in my wheelhouse. But I have read now the first, and the second book will actually be in my wrap-up uh, for December. Um, I bought it at Powell's and read it in a day at my parents' house. Now, this book is just fun. It, the plot is pretty straightforward. You, you will sort of see some of it coming, but the people and the community and the idea behind it are so fantastic and so inclusive. Um, this is the story of a group of people who are hired to um, blow up a dam that is stopping basically the Mississippi River, um, which is infested with feral hippos. Now, people raise hippos also as livestock and ride them just like you did horses. Our main character is sort of on a vendetta quest um, for something that happened in his past. And as he collects this group of people, you have a ooh, pillow overboard. This happened in my last video too. It just doesn't want to stay up there. Um, okay, I get it. I get it. You're going to wind up on the floor. Um, you get to, you meet a character that's non-binary, which is 
Hero is their name, and they are fantastic. They are maybe one of my favorite characters that I've read in literature lately, just for their strength and their power and their identity and self-understanding. Um, there is bisexuality, there is gays, there's our lesbians, there is um, all sorts of different types of people that just exist with n harmoniously in a way that this is just the way the world works. And it's an adventure. So you, you get to know about hippos and riding them and there's feral hippos that are attacking them and there's gunfights and sword, not, not sword fights, knife fights. You guys, it is just fun. It does, it just really, really made me enjoy reading these two books. The second book is more about the people, um, and I'll tell you more about that in my wrap up, but I really think that if you just want to go out and read something fun, River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey is that book, and it really surprised me that I liked it as much as I did. Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about is not so much a surprise because I liked the main character. That's Celine by Peter Heller, um, because Celine is an older woman um, who just kicks butt. And, you know, that's kind of my wheelhouse. I just love these people, um, these people, these women. Um, I love the way they're written. Now, Peter Heller says that Celine is actually based upon his mother, um, and she sounds fantastic. So Celine is the story of a woman who's in her 60s. She is a private investigator who comes from a wealthy family. She is asked by a young girl to investigate the disappearance of her father, who is believed to have been killed by a bear. The book focuses on her, Celine, in two ways. One, the investigation. Her husband is sort of her Watson. They go on a trek throughout sort of the Midwest. They wind up in Wyoming and through Colorado, and it's beautifully described. Peter Heller is very much a nature writer in a lot of ways. He just captures the, the area and the scene beautifully. And as they investigate and find out what happened for real to this man, sort of the intrigue that's going on. And she's smart and she's witty and she's strong and she's great. But you also learn about her history, her childhood, how she became the Celine she is today and the stories of her family. And it's just really well done and really well told. And it's super fun. I was really surprised that I was into the mystery as much as I was into Celine because I knew that I would like her. I just didn't know that I would like as much the story and how well it's told. I actually just saw this in paperback in the bookstore today and the paperback cover just doesn't do it justice. So don't walk away from the paperback cover. Definitely pick up Celine by Peter Heller. The next book on my list I have I talked about quite a bit, and that was The Twelve Lives of Samuel Hawley by Hannah Tinty. Um, this is the story of a, mo a mother, a father, and a daughter, and their relationship. It's told in two ways. So basically, at the start of the novel, you find out that the father and daughter have been on the run from the father's past for some time, and have decided to finally settle down so she can go to high school and sort of have a normal life. The book sort of rotates between those instances where they are in their town and she is building a life and building relationships, which she's never had to do, and the history of how they got there, how her father got there, how she was born, his relationship with his mother, all the relationship with her mother, and all of that. And it's told in those 12 um, chapters are told in a background because each one comes with a gunshot wound that is on her father's body. This is about a father and a daughter. That is the crux of this story, is about why the father treats the daughter the way that she, he does, and the love that they have between each other, and the stress that the life that they have puts on that love. It's also about life choices, and the choices that we make for ourselves, for the people we love, and then also for our own well-being. Um, the book is just super well told. It's well written. Um, and I think you guys will really just connect to the story. I want to say the daughter's name is Lori. Lou is Lou. Sorry, it's been a while since I've read it. Lou is just a strong, independent young woman that you guys will really fall in love with. So The Twelve Lives of Samuel Hawley. The next book, actually, I'm not going to talk much about. I'm just going to tell you Moonstone, the, the Boy Who Never Was by Sojun, Sojun, Sojun. Um, this is a book that it was riz originally written in Icelandic and is translated by whom? Who does the translating here? 
Um, translated by the Icelandic by Victoria Cribb, and it is phenomenal. But really, if you want a, an amazing review of this book, go check out Simon Savage's review of this novel. It hands down blows mine away. Um, but this is the story of a young boy in Iceland in the 1800s, I want to say. Oh, sorry, 1918. Um, and he's in Reykjavik. Um, he is a hustler, and he is gay, and he makes choices to bring in money to himself and to his uh, life um, in that way. It is a little bit graphic in the beginning, I'll just warn you right away, um, but it is well worth it. It has to do with the Spanish flu coming to Reykjavik. It also, can, um, the people seem to, for some reason, connect the flu and the illness to the cinema, and the young main character's love of the cinema is part of what he is as a person. Um, there's a young girl that he is infatuated with and sort of is the independence that he s wishes that he had. Um, it is beautifully told. I mean, this guy can write and it's very slim, but packs such an amazing punch. Highly recommend you check out Simon's video for a much, much better review of this book. But I really was surprised. Little book, big power, Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sue Jung. Okay, so the last two. Um, you guys are probably not going to find that Autumn by Ali Smith is on this list as any surprise. I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, but the reason it's on this books that surprise me list is because of how timely it was and how it made me think so much about the world that I'm currently living in. Um, I've, I've already said Ali Smith does not have the structure of a plot. She doesn't do much to develop a character holistically, but she uses her characters to provide poignant points for you as a reader about the message she's trying to give. So you wind up caring about them because they carry a message that you are really going to carry a, care about by the time the book is over. She writes some beautiful phrases. In my, in my wrap up of this, I read you a part that still I think about all the time. Um, I, this is the story of a relationship between a young girl and a much older man, not a sexual relationship, a friendship. Um, he is in his deathbed and she comes to visit him. She, excuse me, she, um, it's about sort of the life, how they got to their friendship, what's going on in her current life. It's about Brexit. I found it to be a lot about America, too. Um, I just think this book is freaking brilliant. So I really was surprised by just how its timeliness hit me like a rock. And that is Ali Smith's Autumn. Last but not least is the book that made me cry. And I didn't think that it was going to make me cry. And that is Goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong. Um, and it made me cry in all the right ways. This is the story of, what is her name? Ruth. She is, she's just quit her job, her relationship is over, and she moves in with her parents because her, her father is suffering from early onset Alzheimer's or dementia, kind of a little bit, it seems a little bit of both, um, but he's losing his memory and he does things that are out of line for what he normally would do. So her mom asks her to move in and help take care of her father. She has always been really close to her father and not as close to her mother. And it's about learning the history of their relationship as her parents. It's not judging a relationship if you don't know all the pieces. It's about family. It's about love. It's about owning what people give you as a part of themselves. Um, at the end of this book, I was, my eyes were full of tears, but they were tears of joyous hope, but also sadness for what I knew would come after the book was over. Um, it is, it is slim, but I was laughing, I was crying, I was caring, and that is all you need from a really good book. So if you haven't read Goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong, I highly recommend you, highly recommend it to you. And um, really, it is just freaking wonderful. So those are seven books that surprised me this year. I hope you guys have read some of them. If you haven't, I hope you read them all. They are fantastic. Um, let's talk about them in below. As always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for your comments. If you are new to my channel, hello. I hope you liked this video and it puts some books on your TBR. So until next time, happy reading. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.